I'd spent too long in this compound. It was time to leave. The impending harvest would overfill my lone fridge's freezer, and as more would be inefficient, my only choice was to grab a chest freezer. After that was connected, I'd have my basic needs met, and I could begin working on my other short-term goals. Arriving at the station, I used the horn to lure them in from the surrounding area before clustering them and pulling them away. The rain would dampen the spread of the flames, but the sheer quantity of the undead would fan them. Leading them in circles, I was oddly calm. The situation didn't require skill, only time and patience. Eventually, the horde began to thin until only a fraction remained. It had been days since I last fought the dead. It showed, but my greater strength and axe carried me into the gas station. With the dead wiped out, I took my time and grabbed snacks before loading up the chest freezer and heading home. Once the compound was secure, I installed the chest freezer and finally harvested my radishes. That is a lot of experience. The harvest was bountiful, but not enough to stop my fridge's freezer, so I disconnected the chest, replanted the radishes, and made a token effort to clean up the overgrown garden. Speaking of cleanup, I put days of effort into storage solutions and still found myself with piles stacked high, so I spent the remainder of my day trying to get furniture before heading to bed. With another day came aging. The once unfamiliar face that greeted me was now a welcome sight of survival. For now, it could remain, as there was work to do. Soon my other vegetables would be ready to harvest, and I needed a multiplier and experience for the two upcoming farming levels. With the book read, my potatoes not seed bearing, I continued my attempt to gather furniture, and finally succeeded with another white bookshelf. I forgot to check for helicopters. Its proximity meant a run to my base could draw its attention, so I hid away and passed the time the best way I knew how. As the helicopter's noise grew fainter, I risked returning across the courtyard to assess the damage. There was a hole in my wall. The undead had broken through. They could have retreated afterwards, but I needed to be on high alert for the time being. the entrance secure, those lurking outside posed a substantial threat, but not one I could afford to deal with in the dark. Stuck inside and alert from my midday nap, I sorted my books into two groups and removed their duplicates. Still unable to sleep, I worked on my living room, removing redundant furniture and working on the layout. With it looking cleaner, I checked on my plants. All my cabbages had died beneath the overgrowth. In the grand scheme, was inconsequential, but as I had sowed all my cabbage seeds, I needed to find another packet to grow them again. Besides a bang on my wall, the rest of the day was slow as I completed monotonous tasks and fought to stay awake. The overgrown section had cost me my cabbages. It would not happen again. I spent my entire morning ripping out grass and weeds and chopping down the bushes and saplings that had begun to grow. Progress. Consuming the first homegrown veggies, I mentally prepped for my next task. Gathering VHS tapes for skill grinding, and a quick stop to the neighbouring liquor store for more Molotov materials. The familiar streets with sizeable groups quickly broke into the uncharted city. It was bad this close to the CBD. Oh Jesus. So, so bad. Outside the store, I almost shied away from using the horn, but I could make an impact here. I was going to burn them all. The horn pulled in far more than I could have imagined, and I quickly found myself surrounded. Escaping the clutches, I took the opportunity to throw the Molotov and weave through the disparate groups to cluster them. Countless. With the Zeds clustered together, the tension broke and I could slowly walk whilst the following horde snuffed itself out. 
Finishing the remainder, I took the opportunity to rummage through the corpses amongst the ashes. Firex had survived my purge. It was time to loot the stores. Ideally, I'd bring the van out the front, but the dead so close meant it would require another Molotov and too much of the remaining daylight. So after pulling those closest, I cleared out the VHS and liquor stores and grabbed a healthy portion of the loot. With the tapes as light as they were, I'd only need one more run for the remaining shelves and those in the back. Keeping a low profile, I managed to go unnoticed when depositing my gains and when sneaking back into the store. After picking the front clean, I entered the back room. If too many Z spotted me, I'd need to retreat home. So I clung to the walls and shelves whilst looting. With nothing left, I returned to the van and headed home. The area nearby was clear, but soon I found myself surrounded and at a real risk of getting trapped, so I took a safer route. More would follow me home this time. Rusty, I fought all who approached and sealed myself away. With my loot deposited, I checked my generator. There was far more fuel than expected. My prediction was for it to last a little over three days, but it was set to exceed well over a week without the freezer connected. That wasn't the only good news. My potatoes were ready to harvest. I quickly filled my farming experience to level 4 and the fridge's freezer to capacity. To maximise gains for the remaining crop, I needed to read the next farming skill book, taking me into the night, the morning and the afternoon. Rounding out at halfway through level 5, I had eclipsed all other skills in a matter of days and solved any food issues for the near future. Unable to sit idly by, the remainder of the day revolved around maintenance. For my garden, I set about furrowing, sowing, and watering my new potato crop. And for the gen, I repaired its condition with electronic scrap and topped up its fuel. With everything in tip-top shape, I spent the rest of the day working on myself by consuming recipe books and the first volume of first aid before falling asleep. It was time to leave for a hardware store. My next goal was a sledgehammer to break into gun stores. In this city, it was risky to use firearms, but when clustering the undead, it would be an effective tool. Before leaving, I cut away the wear of time again and cleared the entrance for my departure. Despite my purge at the gas station, a recent helicopter and trip through these streets left them barely navigable. Closer to the hardware store, my efforts outside hit vids left the area in stark contrast to before. Using the van's horn, I pulled them out of the woodwork and returned the streets to their natural state. After luring them to the old burn-off pile, I ditched the van outside Zach's and returned to gather them together. Yet another group for me to burn. Spotting a hand axe, I took my shot to get it. But firmly lost to the horde, I set them alight and began moving in circles to engulf them all. paid off as my return went uncontested, though my entry into the store would not be. One was still in here. Failing to draw its attention with hushed whispers, I drew closer until it and an unknown number in the back heard me. Before they broke through, I raced to take as much as possible just in case the numbers were overwhelming. One section of the store yielded good loot, but not what I was looking for. After dumping everything into the boot, I lit my torch and approached the storeroom. With 
the occupants cleared, I could take my pick of everything. If there was a sledgehammer here, I would find it. But there wasn't. My best bet would be to find another hardware store, but that was for another day. Returning under the moonlight, I navigated through the wake of my destruction and the nearby townhouses. Upon my arrival, I met the trailing dead at the entranceway. It was less this time. Safe, I killed the headlights and emptied the boot. I'm a fucking idiot. I am a fucking idiot. I did it again. My loot was still sitting outside the hardware store. After some self-contempt, I checked on my garden, noticed my new skills had their benefits. My higher farming skill let me visually see the state of my crops, rather than needing to approach them to inspect them. Nice. I would return to grab my loot another day. I was getting a sledgehammer, but my options were running thin. In all of Louisville, there are four hardware stores. One burnt down, and two had been searched and stripped, so prepared for the journey to the last one. Dead smack in the CBD. I'd avoided venturing deep into the city, but today would be the day. After swapping out my low condition axe, I was off. It would be interesting. And after some familiar landmarks, it would all be new. This deep, the groups were large, the buildings imposing, and I was out of my depth. I'd never seen so many. The large city structures also presented a problem, obscuring the path forward as I struggled to pass the growing groups. But with careful maneuvering and luck, I made it to the street of my destination. Horns would not be an option here, there were just far too many. It took ages for the nearby dead to stop wandering in, for me to clump them together. But I could finally light my Molotov. Where was my lighter? Without a lighter, I had no realistic way of dealing with the horde. Killing them all would be impossible. With every step drawing the attention of multiple dead, losing them all was just as unlikely. I needed to get to the van to escape, but with the following horde thick enough that a run for it would fail, I ventured deeper into the city to lose most of them. It was expectedly horrifying. Soon the entire street was overflowing with the dead, and I was running out of options. For the same reason my base was safe, the fences of the art gallery provided the opportunity I needed. Jumping it to lose them could work. My plan already bore fruit with a hand axe on a zombie. Unfortunately, there was a gate at the back. So the following dead would continue their hunt, yet the delay might be enough for me to lose them. Over the fence, new groups were already on me, desperately reaching for the last meal in the city. But an alleyway and a corner later, their line of sight was broken, and I had some time. Without a driver's seat window, leaving with the dead close could kill me, so I needed to kill them before I could escape. or pull them away. The roads already traveled would be swarmed, but it felt like those untraversed were just as bad. With the general bearing of the east, my movements were subject to the undead whims as I inched my way back. 
How many were in the buildings? He says... After ramming through another group, return to familiar streets, and eventually, home. In frustration at myself, I charged forward to meet the followers. Successive failures require redemption. It's time to get the pile of items outside the hardware store. Having purged the area twice, the contrast from before to now was night and day. So much so, I was uncontested when loading up outside the store. Unlike my base, how could I let an area far away be in better standing than my own home? Taking my time, I aim to pull in as many as possible before setting them alight. Running into the night, I struggled to keep the situation under control, the flames engulfing more townhouses and stripping the flora nearby. With the fire dwindling, I equipped the pipe wrench and torch and fought the scraps amongst the ashes. Tired, I could finally return home and rest. The dead were still here. Avoiding the fight, I looped the block and hoped the northern section of the road was clear. Their black silhouettes proved me wrong. I was in for a hell of a fight. The first wave crushed took vitamins and assessed what remained. There were too many. During a prolonged night fight, I retreated inside and slept. Alert and my stomach full, it was time. Not satisfied, the fight spread into the intersection until the area was mostly free of the dead. But how many more were lurking in the shadows? Sealing myself away from the world, I could breathe and deal with small internal matters, like my broccoli being ready to harvest, or digging furrows for the next rainfall. With plenty of the day left, I could remedy my earlier failure. The last hardware store in Louisville remained unlooted, potentially had a sledgehammer. It was another hard fought battle through the infested streets to get there. With potentially hundreds lurking at the southern end of the hardware store street, I detoured around the block to get there. Here I found evidence of a hard fought battle, but despite the ashes strewn through the street, the dead's presence appeared unaffected. Now at the store, my earlier efforts paid dividends as I was able to quickly corral the separate groups and throw my Molotov. The horde of flame set about running them in circles within the confines of the parking lot. Looming tiredness presented an issue, but ample vitamins would keep me going. The flames finally snuffed, I could start working on those inside the hardware store. The noise of the fight drew on those from inside and from the neighbouring building, yielding me a motorcycle helmet and a chance to enter the store for loot. After another wave, I could finally search all the shelves. Threatened, I kept my weight down as I skimmed the store for a sledgehammer. But I was unlucky once again. Sledgehammerless, I returned under dusk to the Louisville treatment.
surrounded from ahead and behind, and double back through a car park to escape. The height of the buildings was beginning to cause problems again, as hidden hordes and even cars risked putting me out of commission. As the light dwindled, so did my hope for returning as I barreled through groups to get by. Pressured by the drawn dead, I ditched the van at the entrance and steeled myself for the coming fight. Going for the divide and conquer approach, I pulled a couple into my hand axe and torque. Weighing up my tiredness to the group size, I put faith in the two doors of separation between the horde and my bed again, and chance sleep. Taking my time was imperative, only three or fewer at a time. After finishing the remainder, I cleared the entrance of foliage, brought my van inside. As I worked away in the immediate vicinity, I devised new locations for sledgehammer runs, thought about my dwindling situation at home. The dead encroached, and eventually, there would be too many to deal with. My best plan was to construct bottlenecks nearby to restrict the flow of undead from the city, but was that more important than getting a sledgehammer and arming myself? Truth be told, getting guns wasn't important to me. I just put too much effort into the hunt to give up now. My new destination was a collection of warehouses on the outskirts of the CBD. Hopefully, the amount of Zeds would be lower and I could get there without issue. Preparing for the journey, I assessed the condition of my step van and Cerise. The broken hood on the van meant any hit Zeds would damage the engine, so I worked on a station wagon. I removed the passenger side window and placed it on the driver's side for protection, topped it up with gas, and headed off. Tight street and overgrown curbs limited my maneuverability. Soon I was overwhelmed. Oh shit. of retreat instantly squashed. Driving across the street, I used the horn to pull in those from inside and set about navigating and collecting the swarming dead. With the car park too swarmed to burn them off here, I headed down the street to the larger one that serves the warehouse complex. Despite the ever growing threat, I continued to yell, drawing in as many as I could from inside. Eventually, those joining began to wane, and the large group following started to thin. With a smaller group of flame, I led them up the street to collect those near my car. It was risky, but we conserve Molotovs. Safely back, the process repeated into the evening until I finished the remainder. My efforts to clear around my car paid off, but I was stuck with another horde to burn. Except this time, pushed into the night and through tiredness.
Late at night, getting darker, another horde would burn through my vitamin supplies, so I sneakily killed to enter the building nearby. Two broken windows, all uncovered, and sleeping out here risked a violent wake up, so I barricaded myself in the bathroom and slept on a dingy office chair. It worked. I went unspotted, now had a whole day to continue clearing and exploring the warehouse complex. The dead lurking inside was a problem, but the area outside being clear meant a direct approach was unlikely to draw too much attention. The X carry, with one and two shots sending the oncoming groups enough to keep everything under control. After stripping the corpses of electronics and keys, we could start on the nearby crates. No sledgehammer. Gathering what I could, I approached the next warehouse. was a lot more promising. As I methodically worked my way across the stack crates, I found propane torches, wood glue, an assortment of axes, and cabbage seeds. But no sledgehammer. Oh my god, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I fucking got it. 